Hey, what's up? It's HJ, and today I want to talk about something that everybody watching this video, including myself, has asked at least one time in their life. I'm a Christian. Can I date a non-Christian? Can I do it? Is it sin? Is it okay? Is it good? Is it bad? And I specifically got the idea from this video from James Anthony Bro. I have a girlfriend, but she's not a Christian. What are some ways I can show her love of Christ? Please make a video. Um, so yeah, I really wanted to address this one and talk about it with you guys. So if you were interested on hearing the answer to the question, can a Christian date a non-Christian? Stay tuned. The Bible doesn't actually say the word dating or date or going on a date. Um, it doesn't talk about it in scripture. So with that being said, we have to look at what God says about relationships in general, uh, marriage relationships, and I'll tell you why in a second, marriage, um, love, loving romantic relationships, and then also the relationship between a believer and a non-believer to conclude our answer for if it's even a good idea to date considering we don't find the word date in the Bible. And so I just want to start with the first thing to maybe get your brain start thinking is why? Why do you want to date a non-believer? Like what is your goal? Nobody dates without trying to get something out of it no matter what that something may be. What is your goal in dating somebody? The answer should be we date to cultivate a romantic relationship in hopes of finding a spouse, um, a mother or father for our future children, somebody that we can share the most intimate parts of our soul with aside from Christ. That is the person you are going to share every intimate detail, feeling, hope, dream, failure with. And if you and that person are not on the same page spiritually, how is that even going to work? You are literally setting yourself up for failure, whether it be in dating or in marriage. One, you live your life by the word of God. You let God and his word dictate how you think, how you act, how you love, how you interact with other people, how you interact with yourself, how you interact with God. And this person who does not have the spirit of God within them, has no conviction for sin, lives life by what they think is right in their own eyes, what they think's wrong, what they want, what they don't want, how they feel, how they don't feel. And so that is going to cause so much friction in your dating relationship, especially in your marriage relationship. And God didn't design it to be that way. So we shouldn't have to as Christians. How can you put yourself and equal yourself and yoke yourself with somebody who hates your best friend, hates your savior? Like, and you may say, oh, well, they don't hate God. You know, they'll go to church with me. They'll read the Bible. They're just not like into it or they just don't understand it or they just don't fully love God or they just aren't saved yet. Bible says there's no in-between. You're either for God or you're against him. There's no gray area. You either love God or you're at enmity with God. And God either finds favor in you because of the salvation of Jesus Christ or God looks at you and is storing wrath up upon you. So how can you yoke yourself with somebody who is storing wrath up against them while you're like living in the love of Jesus? It just doesn't make sense. Well, you might say to yourself, yeah, but I'm going to show her the love of Christ, the truth of the scripture. I'm going to do Bible study with her. I'm going to take her to church or him. I'm going to take him to church. I'm going to show him the love of the Lord. And don't worry, he's going to be a Christian because I'm praying hard for him. I'm praying over him. And I would just say, pump the brakes for a second and let's really look at how is somebody even saved? It's not by any effort of them or any effort of you or me, it's by the grace of God alone. And so for you to say, don't worry because I'm praying and I'm seeking the Lord about it, which probably no, cause God would say no. <laughs> it doesn't guarantee that they will be saved. It's completely contrary to the gospel. It's completely contrary to how the theology just behind somebody, how somebody gets saved in the first place. So I would just definitely look into that um, and maybe get your bearings on the truth of what God's word says about salvation. Um, but then there's another angle, which I have a friend, I won't say their name, cool peeps, like they're married now. He was a Christian. She was not a Christian whenever they were dating. And it did so happen that she did come to saving faith in Christ. And now they are married and they love Jesus and they serve the Lord together. And that's great. But think about it like this for how many months or how many years? Were you compromising your faith by being with somebody who has no conviction of sin? 
And I'm not just talking about, yeah, you're probably gonna have sex, there's probably gonna be sexual impurity because it's hard enough not to have sex with somebody you're in love with and you're both Christians and you have conviction of the Holy Spirit when you're so drawn to somebody and so close with somebody and you have more than just physical, you actually have a spiritual connection that only two Christians can have. It's hard enough not to compromise on your purity there. Imagine somebody who has no conviction of sin. So how many years before these two people got married and she did come to saving faith in Christ, did they fail? Did they slip up? The way that they spoke to each other, the way that they loved each other, the way that they served each other, the way or didn't love, didn't speak, didn't serve, anger's flying, things are being said that should never come out of anybody's mouth in a loving, holy relationship. Like, it's just not conducive to holiness to be with somebody who has no concept of holiness. Does that make sense? It's non-conducive to your holiness to be in an intimate relationship with somebody who has no concept of holiness. Be wise in all that you do. And I think a mark of growing as a Christian is that you're growing in wisdom and you're growing in living in a way that pleases the Lord and satisfies um, the Lord and not self-gratification, not making excuses for sin. If you really love Jesus, you're gonna be repelled romantically by people who don't love Jesus. That's just the way it is. And sometimes for a moment your flesh can take over and you really can love Jesus, but they really are beautiful or they really are handsome and they have everything you want in a person as far as dreams and goals and looks and job, money, schooling, everything minus Christ. But if you don't have Christ, what do you really have? All of these things are gonna fade. And so I just want to encourage you to build your relationships upon the solid rock of Jesus Christ. But if you just want to show the love of Christ in hopes that somebody comes to salvation, you don't need to date them to do it. That's why God says, share the gospel. Pray that God cultivates their heart and saves them. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post twice a week. I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to hear your comments below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have scriptures to go with what I'm saying that you can encourage other people watching? Comment below. Let's interact on this one. I know this is a big topic and there's gonna be some haters. If you think that I'm full of baloney, then Make sure to give me a thumbs up if you like it and I will see you in a few days with a new video. See you next time.